From newstalkzb.co.nz. It's Mike Hosking. Good morning. How are we? we? We are fine. This whole thing, I mean, how do you feel about it? You sell something, you start a project, it takes off, you've got a television show, you're universally famous, you've got a fantastic book. It's, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> it's still, I'm still coming to the terms with it, really. It's, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect the food truck to be this popular. I didn't. When we started out almost two years ago, you know, it was me and this little, in this little truck, 1970 Bedford, um, called Betty. And, uh, and she's a, she's a beautiful little beast and, uh, took us around Auckland and, you know, it was quite simple in the beginning. It was like, right, let's just take on the fast food giants, do what they do, but do it better and take out the fat and take out the salt and take out the sugar. And let's make a show around it. And the first the first show just rated off the roof. And then the second show, the second series, it went even further. It's quite incredible. It just shows that there's a demand out there for people who want good food. How do you explain it? Because there is also a demand out there for crap, because crap sells unbelievable amounts, doesn't it? I mean, there's a whole crap industry. And so you're taking that on, and yet there seems to be equally a large, if not larger, group of people who want to do something completely different. And that's it. And crap does sell because you know it's something that we all recognise. It's you know it's in our faces every single day through through advertising, through billboards, through through TV media, and you know it's it's something that people recognise and they go and they go into these places and they know what they're going to get. So you know with the food truck to take it, turn it up on its head, and give a fresh approach to to fast food, I think that's what. Uh, entice a lot of people into into watching the show. Do you dislike the fast food industry? Not at all. No, no. So they've no. got their place. They're allowed to do what they do, and and, that, and that's it. And we never really we never really set out to to take on the fast food giants um, and uh, and to ditch them. We didn't want to do that because I, I don't think there's a there's a place for that. And and it wasn't that sort of show. It was Sunday night, seven o'clock. It's family viewing, and it, and it's to give people an alternative. See the the, the one that I thought you were going to trip up on was the sushi. I thought, yeah, sushi's already healthy. What are you going to do with it that's going to change it, make it different? This is the, the, You've blown it here, and yet look what happened. I mean, that was a sensational success, wasn't it? And I, I stood there for quite a while, and uh, and when the when the sushi episode kind of uh, came along, and you know, I had everything all planned before we went to air, and uh, I went to air and was like, God, this is not going to work. Because, you know, you go through and what you see on TV is actually how it happens. I go into these places and I work with these masters and I see what they do. And I'm like, well, the ideas I had written down are just not going to work. So <laughs> I, there was a lot of sleepless nights over that sushi episode, I can tell you. How much, how much research goes into whatever it is you do? Because, in fact, and in, in, in talking about the book and the recipes, there's a lot of detail in your recipes. I mean, they're, they're not, you know, it's not assemblage, is it? It, it is, and and some of them are a law. Some of them are a lot a lot more in depth than others. Like some of them are as simple as taking a piece of fish, putting it onto a skewer, wrapping it in potato, and frying it. And then some of them are, uh, go a little bit further into it. Like the vegetarian burgers, there's quite a few components. Some of the curries, there's a lot of components that go into them. And so yes, there's a lot of research. But I I feel you know being a chef for 25 years. My research has been done up until that point, and and for those twenty five years of of working under under fantastic people and and running and running great restaurants, it's it's kind of just drawing on my knowledge really. It must be wonderful too. Our kids love it, and I know lots of kids who do love it. So the fact that the, the, that you're attracting a generation of people must give you some hope at least that although they probably still eat McDonald's, they they know what what food is, how to make it, chop it, cut it, put stuff on it, cook it, etc. And they might go on to maybe you know cook well it's amazing it's amazing the amount of kids that come up to me yeah. and, and parents that come up and go my kids just love the show and yeah it's quite amazing you'd be driving down the motorway in the truck and and the the kids would come up alongside you because nine times out of ten people pass me on the motorway and they come up alongside you and the kids are in the back seat and their faces are just planted to the back window as they go past the truck and uh you know and it's i think it's that's part of the beauty is it's, it's pulled an audience of kids yeah. and kids that want to cook and kids that want to go home and, and make spaghetti and tomato sauce. And, and you know, hopefully this will carry on uh, for years to come and those kids will grow up showing their kids how to see, cook. Wait, see, how old are you? You, you I mean, you look... 30, 30, you, 39. Oh, I was going to say you look 34, but so, 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 <laughs> so, you're, th so you're 39. Did you cook in school? Did, where, where did all that... See, because I'm, I'm of the generation that missed it. I, I think I was brought up on a farm, uh, and so it was a real farming. Food was energy. Food was fuel. Fuel kept, uh, you know, food kept us going. And and uh, lunch was sit down, 
you know, half an hour and then straight back out to work and, and I was brought up on a chicken farm and so, you know, chicken was mm. was our number one meal. And my mum would put the chicken on at nine o'clock in the morning and be ready at six o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> and so you just grew up around it. That's the case and so often, is it? If you grow up around it, if it's a big deal, it's just part of who you are, it's 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 what what you do, isn't it? It is. And so I, I think I I the passion for, for cooking for me came from working in the kitchens, working as a dishwasher, working in, in, a, in a mass commercial kitchen and just the buzz that went on and around working in a professional kitchen was just amazing. And, and so it was the, the buzz of the hospitality that drew me in more so than the food yeah. itself. So why then? This makes this even even not, not odd, but even more braver, I suppose. You've got, you had a beautiful restaurant and you go and flick it. I mean, you had all you wanted, then you go and sell it all. And that's it. You kind of, uh, I think the restaurant industry kind of strives on, a lot of it is adrenaline, a lot of it is the is the thrill of the chase, a lot of it is, you know, uh, creating something new. And so, you know, with, with Moulton, it was a fantastic challenge for us, but now it's time for us to move on and do something else. So where do you go with this, though? So you start out with your truck and you do your recipe. I mean, do you just want drive your truck forever and make more recipes? <laughs> that poor little truck, I think it's almost <laughs> retired now. But, um, yeah, no, we're... we're we're looking we're looking for a new a new adventure we're looking for a new site we're looking to you know to continue um bringing food to people whether it's through tv or whether it's through a restaurant and you know for me it, it is uh, exciting times but also very scary times in my life because you know i'm probably going to be going through the same scenario of starting something from scratch yeah. and it's that whole invest all your your money invest all your time into a project and just open the doors and hope for people to come ah uh, <laughs> listen if you believe it generally works now are you ready for the criticism yes and it's soft criticism but it comes from an expert in in the form of my wife my wife has every cooking book in the world she is an expert in the cook she's no she, she's a very good cook in fact, I should say publicly, she's the greatest cook in the world, Michael. But um, So anyway, she looks at your book, and here's what she says. She says she, she's into the simple, and so, you know, you're Donna Hayes and all those sort of things. Some of this stuff here, you got to work at. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. You got to, There's some ingredients in there you've got to go hunt and find, and then, then there's a lot of stuff you go and cook and grind and pour some pe- pestle and mortar and bang. And, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's it, yeah. And, is, that, and, is that all right, though? I mean, you would argue you should do that, you know, hard well, I, enough. I think it's a, it's a next generation of food. You know, the, the Donna Hayes are, are very good in their, in their sales and the food looks fantastic and it, and it comes across in a, in a cookbook very well. But, you know, I think we're moving on from that. I think we're going to the next generation of cooking that people have mortar and pestos and people have blenders and people want to put a little bit more effort into into the food because I feel that, you know, the more effort you put into the food, the, the, the better the reward at the end and especially if you can get your kids doing some of the stuff as well. Right. So what you're saying to my wife? Is harden up. Move, I, I wouldn't move, say it in so many move, words, but uh. move, move, <laughs> move, move, move on from your simple recipe, and 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 you will you will appreciate the energy and effort you put in once you get it at the other end. Flavor at the end of the day comes comes at a price, and sometimes flavor is is co- is created by a little bit of hard work in the kitchen and and pulling a few more ingredients together no. than you know four or five. That's what I told her. I, I, I said uh, that's that's what he'll say, and it turned out the way. Anyway, listen, I wish you all the very best with it. I think it's a brilliant program, brilliant book. Thank you very much.